Today, we're going to take a look at auto crafting systems and the applied energistics mod. And it's so easy. You don't even need a super complex ME system. I'm going to do it with the bare bones system right here. Let's get started. So starting out, we're going to build off of our main system here and just start with a very basic crafting computer. All you need really is a crafting co-processing unit and a 1K crafting storage. You can add more of these. The way it works is these co-processing units will allow you to access more of these pattern providers at a single time. Crafting storage will allow you to build more things at once, as in number of items for different types of items with the co-processing unit. Now, for my very simple machine here, I'm also gonna add one of these. It's a crafting monitor, totally not necessary, but it'll tell you what you're currently building and the progress towards it. Just for funsies, I'm gonna show you an even bigger machine you can make if you do more complex recipes. You can mix and match, you could do, you know, six coprocessors or maybe replace one of those with some storage and build up and just kind of go crazy. And it doesn't have to be a 1K crafting storage either. If you've got more resources, you can add some higher storage, but it doesn't hurt to have a bunch of these smaller computers as well, just to do that backend work if you need a bunch of small, easy to do recipes on standby. Now that we've got that done, we're gonna come off of the, the chain here and build up a little bit just to show and I'm going to put this pattern provider right here. Now this is where we will store our recipes that we'll come up with that we'll be able to auto craft and call into here. But in order to craft off of them, we need to attach at least one molecular assembler. I like to attach one to all possible adjacent sides. That way now this can access five of these molecular assemblers, which are basically its version of crafting table. And so having that plugged in, we can now come in here and provide patterns and any one of those patterns can access all five of these at any given moment. So now we need patterns. So let's start in here. We need to go into a very special terminal, this ME pattern coding terminal, and you need to have some blank patterns here. Now on the very basic system, the crafting patterns, you can provide any normal crafting recipe and it'll automatically finish it out and you can save that. So I started with basic logs and it crafted it here. If you hold shift, it'll show you what item it actually is. So it's flickering for the planks here. So now I can make very basic planks. What if say I also want to make some sticks? Easy enough. Now I can turn logs into planks and sticks. So now I'm gonna try and do a new third recipe in here using these sticks and the oak planks. Very simple recipe to make signs and code that. But if you know in the machine itself, it doesn't have planks or sticks to make that, that sign. I wanna try and nest it so that if I hit to create a sign, it'll automatically create the amount of sticks and planks that it needs to do that. So coming back over this pattern provider, I'm gonna provide it with all these patterns that I just created and now know has how to create all of these. And if I come here and I say, I wanna craft, let's call it 20 signs. It'll make the next highest possible number, 21. It knows that it needs to create 48 planks and of those eight sticks to eventually create 21 signs. And to do that, it needs at least 12 logs, which it has. Now I'm gonna hit create. And what I want is for y'all to watch in this left corner here and see those machines immediately start running. See, they are automatically crafting everything and darn they are already done. I have my signs. Easy peasy. Now, you might have noticed this processing patterns. This is where things get a little more complicated. These are for your machines that aren't as easy as just a simple crafting recipe. Usually this involves something leaving the ME system. For example, a furnace, it's technically leaving the system. So we're gonna come over to this furnace and look at how to make this cooperate with our patterns. So the very first thing I like to do in a system like this is start out underneath with a line going back and it's gonna be an import bus. And the easiest way to tell the difference between import and export 
is import is pulling into the ME system. It's importing from whatever it's attached to into the system. Export is pulling out of the ME system and into what you're attached to. Also, they look kind of like arrows. So you can see this one is kind of an arrow pointing into the wire. So that's how you can think of it's pointing the resources into the wire. Same over here, the export bus, it's pointing into the furnace. So that kind of helps distinguish those a bit because it can get a bit confusing sometimes. Now, how do we provide the recipe? We're gonna do this pattern provider, which is similar to the block version, but flatter like the import export bus. And I'm gonna attach it to a barrel just so it acts as a additional inventory. And then on the side of the barrel, I'm going to do a storage bus. I just really like these storage buses because they help filter very specific things, whatever you need. Um, and it can read the filters further on down the line. And then I can build up here. And now that we've got this built, this would in theory be able to pull resources into this barrel as an in extra inventory, filter them out of the barrel, and into the side is either the fuel or the top is the resource you want and then pull out, except none of these filters are set up. So let's start configuring some of those real quick. One thing we're gonna need, definitely coal. The next, iron. And you know what? I'm gonna pull an extra piece of both of these out because I will need to smelt a single piece of iron for filtering purposes. Luckily there is some coal still in here. Pull that out even though i haven't filtered anything it should automatically pull into the system as soon as that's done so now when we come back over here we can set this side export bus as coal because whenever you set up an me system think of coal going into the side and then in the top are raw iron and you can upgrade these filters eventually to add more as different ores if you so choose otherwise you would need at least one furnace for each ore you plan on smelting but that's all right more you can build into that as you go on or just have a line of furnaces each one dedicated to a specific ore and also it doesn't need to be the side it can be in the back or whatever so you can have a line of them going down so iron's smelted notice it's not in there it's come out and it should be over here perfect so i'm going to go into the pattern coding terminal switch over to processing pattern and this is where things get a little funky because you got to be very exact in what you want to do because you risk messing up one thing and the system will hold and get confused and stuck. So here I'm going to say we want to take one iron and one coal and from that we can expect to get at least one iron ingot. And so every time I ask it to make a single iron ingot, it's going to pull one of each. It'll say it needs at least one of each. Now I know you can get multiple pieces of iron from a single piece of coal. For this sake, we're gonna say one and one just to keep it nice and easy. I'm gonna encode this pattern. I'm gonna pull these back out, slap this pattern in here, double check the rest of this. Now there's one thing I already noticed. There's no power to this line. It's separated, it's not connected to our system at all. And technically it doesn't even need to be connected. So long as we eventually find a way to power it, it can be on its own and that can be beneficial because every single one of these things uses a channel. I love using these smart cables because every line on here shows you a channel being used and each cable can only hold eight channels going into the controller. So if you can avoid clogging up a bunch of channels by having one of these slightly disconnected systems, it's very beneficial to do so. So all we need is power. One of my favorite ways to do that is this quartz fiber. It'll allow you to bridge two separate color ME system only in power. So now we see this powered up and it's showing three channels taken up by one, two, three. And we can build down this line and add even more channels without taking up any of these channels that we saw earlier with having five coming into this. So that is such a beneficial way to save space. But now everything's powered on. Everything seems filtered, assuming I didn't mess anything up. Let's take this iron out and ask the system, you know what? Smelt 20 iron for me. 
you've got the raw iron, you've got the coal. What you got? And immediately it starts putting some coal and iron in there. The rest is in this barrel and it's going to slowly pour in there. And as it finishes up, automatically drawn to the furnace. And we can see over on this crafting computer, it's working its way through. That's how you set up furnaces. But what about other mods? In this case, IC2 is really an annoying complex mod that uses some of these extra machines that can get a little funky. So I'm going to add them to this ME system and see what we can do about it. So similar to what we just did with the furnace, I like to always have an import bus on the bottom so that no matter what we do, whatever comes out of this machine is automatically going back into the computer. Then do these pattern providers on top as well. And these are already powered through their own mod with this little power source in the back. So even if you're doing this in, uh, in your own survival world, you still need to find a way to power them. Now, something that is concerning, we are hitting eight out of eight channels. So we may be running out here. Yeah. See, this is missing a channel. So that is no good. So what we're going to end up doing is disconnecting these and splitting these that they're coming off into their own. A little bit of cable management in order to, to make this work, but now we should be good. Devices online. Perfect. That's what we want to see. Now, why did I bring specifically a macerator and a compressor online? Because I want to make one of the most annoying chain recipes in um, IC2, which involves all this carbon stuff. I want to make these carbon plates, which it was, if I open this up, you can see to make a carbon plate, you need to compress a single carbon mesh. But to make a carbon mesh, you need to, in a crafting table, combine two carbon fibers. But to make two carbon fibers, you need to combine a bunch of coal dust. And to get coal dust, you need to crush coal. So we are going to go all the way down that chain with recipes. Knowing that to create, whoop, that got a little out of hand. To create a single carbon plate, you need to compress a single carbon mesh, which I do not have. I'm going to give myself one of those. You would have to manually make every one of these recipes at least once uh, in order to get them to auto craft later on. I'm cheating because I'm boring. So now we've got that recipe saved, but to create the carbon mesh, what was it? Two of these carbon fibers, but it was a normal crafting recipe, right? Perfect. Now we've got the carbon fibers. So it was four dust to make one of those though. Pull that off to the side. And how do we make dust? It was one coal, except this is still the crafting menu. Switch to the processing one coal to one dust. And we know we got to attach that specifically to the correct machine. So first I'm going to come over to the pattern provider. And these were the two crafting recipes in the middle. You can still distinguish them because it says crafts 1x carbon fiber and this says produces 1x gold dust or produces 1x carbon plate. So these go into the crafting. Whereas, oop, whereas these go into the machines. So this was the crushing machine. So we want to crush up the coal and then the compressor for the um, carbon plate. Now we come back here take all of this out and we say, I want to make 10 carbon mesh plate things hit start and it'll automatically start brushing up the coal. And then it's going to craft everything it needs slowly. As time goes on, you can walk away from this and go collect resources or do whatever you want, but you don't have to worry about all those nesting recipes, which can be so annoying, especially in this mod. Crafting them can take so much time waiting on these machines. And even then, once it runs out of 64, you got to restock it. This is going to do that for you. It's going to handle all that heavy work to make sure everything is crafted as you need. 
And that is why I absolutely love Applied Energy Sticks for the purpose of auto crafting, as well as many other features of having a nice advanced base. But one of the first things you should do is create yourself at least a simple auto crafting system to automate the tasks that you're going to be doing most in whatever mod that may be, whether that's IC2, Botania, or anything like that. There is going to be a way and some sort of trick or system to create exactly what you need it to do. If this tutorial helped you, let us know down in the comments. Also, let us know what you want to see next, whether that's a new mod or another guide. And as always, thank you so much for watching.